original install on the uh, Cobb access port, I had a pretty detailed, you know, installation video of basically from open box to uh, to the ending and kind of a quick review on that. And I never really explained on how to change the gauges or the gauge layout. Um, so let me just go over that real quickly. Uh, let's see if I can pull this out a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Yep. All right. So hopefully you guys can see this right here. So basically you have, you know, all your different features here, um, but I'm just going to go over gauges. You go into gauges, you have a center button. Sorry about that, guys. So you have a center button on here, okay? You have center, up, down, and back. Those are your arrow buttons, all right? So you go ahead and hit the middle button. What that is gonna do, I think you start out, you go, um, what I did right there is you basically start out in this mode. Um, you hit the up arrow button two times and go to setup. Once you go to setup, you can change the gauge layout by going up two more times, hitting the enter button. Um, I think that it starts out in one gauge when you first turn on the access port. And also, the gauge that it is using is not boost. I think it's Airflow Learn or AF Learn. So when you first install this, you're going like, what the heck is that? Because I mean, you've kind of never really seen it before. Um, on the access port at all just because I mean the access ports completely new to you So what you do is you use those arrow keys you scroll down and you go to that gauge and then you hit enter Oops, I just started data logging. Um, also if you hit the enter button it starts data logging Okay, so you go down until it goes blue around the edges So do it hit enter then you can change the monitor um, by that it means basically changing the gauge type so I think, like I said, when I first started off, it was like this, Airflow Correction 1, which I had no idea what that meant. Um, but basically what that is, is it's telling you that your Airflow Learn is within a certain parameter of being right on. If it's subtracting fuel, so right now I'm subtracting 0.078 to get the correct air fuel ratio, or if I'm adding fuel to get the proper air fuel ratio. Um, usually you want this to be within about 5% or so. Um, I think eight is the max uh, that you wanna be off by, eight plus or minus. So if you're in that zone, um, your tune may need to be corrected from everything that I've read or heard about. Um, but within five is usually pretty good and dead on, like I mean 0 0.078, that is, that's pretty damn good. You wanna be about, you know, about zero. Um, so anyways, I like, on mine, I go to setup, I hit the up arrows a couple times, and I really like the six gauge, um, because it just gives me the most things on the gauges itself. Um, these are what I usually have on here. I have Airflow Learn 1, because I, pretty much guys, also, when I'm driving around, I always have this access port on the car. Um, just because I like looking at the gauges and I like seeing what's going on with my engine. So I like having Airflow Learning 1. Um, I like the Fine Knock Learn, which is telling you if you're getting any sort of fine knock. So that's usually going to read back um, a negative. So anything negative, like negative 0.74, negative 1.4, um, those things can come up sometimes. And that's what we're talking about when we get a Fine Knock Learn. Feedback Knock, that's a more, from what I've, from what I've heard, a feedback knock is basically basically that the engine's knock sensor is uh, is reporting a knock. So it's reducing a little bit of maybe the timing um, to you know correct that knock issue. The fine knock learn is more something that it, the computer or the um, sorry the map is actually kind of learned that it has a knock around that area, so it's compensating for that. Um, the other one I have on here sometimes is fuel injector duty cycle which is kind of interesting. I mean, if you, you know, if you rev up the car, you can see, you know, it's using 14% uh, injector duty cycle. Uh, the other one I really like is engine uh, intake temperatures. So right now you can see I'm idling. This is what I'm talking about, guys. When it gets hot at idle, like I don't have that, um, I don't have the heat shield on. It's at 138 degrees and it's 70 degrees outside right now. Uh, it's like 10, 18 at night and it's 70 degrees. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's getting kind of getting kind of hot out there. But, uh, yeah, usually you want that 
within 10 or 15 degrees of you know your actual I mean the cooler the better you're gonna get a denser air intake charge and it's gonna be a lot better you're gonna make more boost you're gonna make it faster you're gonna make more power uh, but your main gauge that everybody wants right because we don't have them in our cars which is ridiculous the boost gauge that's right here so you can see right now it's reading like negative 6.8 um, you know I haven't really built any boost because I'm just sitting here in my driveway but I thought I'd just give you guys a you know a glance of that um, on the corners here it's gonna give you the peak numbers so it's gonna give you uh, the least amount of boost that it's got so negative vacuum pressure and the highest right the highest boost is gonna read on this side and that's pretty much with everything on the car um, it's gonna give you the lowest number and the highest number now if you want to reset those values you hit the back arrow and then you hit the inner arrow one more time or the inner circle um, that's going to reset your values just to kind of get you back to a, a baseline on that and that's just something you can play around with you know and just kind of figure out on your own um some of the other good ones that are to have uh let me just scroll through here real quick uh dam the dynamic advanced learn um no that's not the one it's uh dam dynamic advance multiplier that one that's the number that this uh that the map is basically multiplying by if you see that number change that's bad news it's subtracting a ton of timing it's it's doing some things to correct some knock issues that can be uh devastating so that in my particular car is always at one and should stay at one if you see that moving around that's not good um one of the other ones i'll just change this real quick uh one of the other ones gosh you know i can't even remember right now hold on let me uh let me scroll through here what one did i used to like i think i like i used to like target boost just to kind of see what the uh what the car was trying to get boost at um you know if you're putting it there it's you know it's trying to get 1.2 pounds but it did not because i mean it's not under any load or anything like that so um I don't know so right now that's about all I can think about right now but I mean basically it's pretty cool um, that's how you do that um, if at any time you want to start data logging if you guys are wondering like what's a data log basically you pick all the parameters that you want that the car's ECU is giving you and it's gonna print out uh, an Excel data sheet basically of all that information um, it logs at 12 kilohertz or sorry at 12 Hertz it logs at 12 Hertz so sometimes see how these numbers are changing really quickly here it's not like when you're revving it see how fast they just kind of scroll you're not gonna get every one of those little numbers in there um, I think it takes it a tenth of a second uh, you know upon of what it's actually capturing at um, you know so you're getting those numbers but you're not getting every single number in there but it's, it's picking up on all that stuff and that's what you're gonna use you know to just review your logs make sure you don't have anything that's looking bad on them um, and that's how you can get a good idea of how your engines running so I thought I'd just go over this real quick guys uh, let me know if you like the video um, you know please like or subscribe and we'll talk to you soon peace out guess I never showed my face peace out